It all started for me in 1999. And I want to spend a few minutes now showing you where learning outcomes fit into the Bologna process. The whole idea of the Bologna process is transparency, clarity, so that a student in Ireland who is thinking of coming to Slovenia to this university can go onto the website of this university and get a very clear picture of every module in every course that he or she is interested in doing. Prior to the lockdown, there was chaos. Every university was autonomous. Every university had different standards. Every university used different ways of describing their courses. But now we are coming together to use similar type of language in describing our courses. As you know, a lot of countries have signed up, all of the EU countries and other countries as well. You know, a, a few weeks ago, I was up in Moscow giving a course to uh, some of the professors from various universities there. And to date, I've been out to Chile in South America three times. Now, why, you might expect to ask, why on earth should people in Russia and in South America be interested in the Bologna process. They're interested because they want to align their courses with all the courses in this various countries that have signed up to the Bologna process. Because by aligning their courses, it makes it easier for student mobility and makes it easier for mutual recognition. So if a student from your university comes to my university and does a 10 credit ECTS module in say the English language or an Irish history, they will get credit back in their own university. So the common language of learning outcomes and ECTS helps to improve and enhance student mobility and mutual recognition. And this is what this European higher education area is all about. But the key point about the Bologna process is that it's more than one day. Set up a system to make it easier to understand the descriptions of qualifications and qualification structures. Without the Bologna process, we would still have the chaotic situation that existed where some courses were described as bachelors, or they called them diplomas, or they called them uh, all sorts of different names. Now we are bringing law and order into higher education throughout the European higher education area. Now, where do learning outcomes fit in? Learning outcomes have been mentioned in every community that has been issued with all of the act, all of these meetings of the ministers of education. And Slovenia, just like Ireland, has signed up to the Bologna process. So it is now a legal requirement for us to write learning outcomes for all modules. Now, you can see there the learning outcomes have been listed. Similarly, in the London community, again, ECTS based on learning outcomes. From learning outcomes and credits to improve recognition and qualifications, and so on. So, everywhere you go in the London, the two words, learning outcomes, keep cropping up time and time again. Now, the whole idea is to make the structures within Europe more compatible and comparable. Because students will be able to decide our students are our customers. And 
students can travel from one country to the next. So students can decide where they want to study and in order to inform them or help to inform them to make a decision, learning outcomes as the common language are of tremendous help. Now, we started in our university training our professors in 2005. All the training and the implementation of the learning process was organised by the Quality Promotion Unit in the university. We started running seminars like this. We started off with small groups just like what we have here. And you became the experts. You were trained in learning outcomes. And then you went back to your own departments and you trained your colleagues. In order to help to train our professors, I was drawn in because I had done a lot of work on learning outcomes when I was working on my own PhD. So I was asked by the head of the quality promotion unit if I would be involved in training our professors. And when I started to train courses first, I would bring in papers from the literature on learning outcomes. But the professors would say to me, Declan, we have not time to read all these papers. We are too busy. Can you write something for us which is much simpler? Something we can use in our office to help us to write learning outcomes. And so I sat down and over a period of a few months I wrote this practical guide so that even the professors who did not come to any training courses, they had no excuse not to do the work because the head of our quality assurance sent out a copy to every professor in the university. And they said, everything you need to write your learning outcomes is in that. So it was an interesting experience. This publication was just for my own professors. And then various other countries heard about it. And soon it was translated into a whole pile of languages. If I had been charged, I would have been a very rich man. We just give it away. You know? <laughs> uh, the quality of promotion unit you sell it to all countries just at the price of the print. So everything was free. So that, that really contained everything that the professors needed to know. You will also find material on the internet. Now, all of that book, we wrote a summary paper for the Bologna Handbook. And this is the former retired professor of education. And this was the head of the quality promotion unit, Don Ryan. So if you Google that, you will find that also on the internet. But what I will do is, I will give my presentations plus various papers to Pika and she can put everything on the quality promotion website so that you can download everything. Now, you are probably all familiar with ECTS credits. Have you all, we've all used those. Okay, so how are ECTS credits related to learning outcomes? Okay, we know that ECTS credits refers to student workload. The amount of work that a student has to put in in order to pass the module. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, the first thing is that ECTS credits are based on student output. In other words, they will, ECTS credits are like the currency that the students get by achieving the learning outcomes. 
So learning outcomes are the common language of the Bologna process. And ECTS credits are the common currency. It's wonderful to come to Slovenia and walk down the street and go in with some euros from Ireland and buy an ice cream. Common currency <coughs> are terrific. And this is exactly how ECTS works. The common currency inside the European higher education area. Now, in the ECTS user guide, it emphasizes very clearly that they are based on the workload that students need to achieve the learning outcomes. So when students achieve the learning outcomes, they are paid for in ECTS credits. Now, as you probably are aware, one year's work is 60 ECTS credits. And one ECTS credit is between 25 to 30 hours of work, generally speaking. So if you are doing a module which is 5 ECTS credits, it means that the student, in order to pass that module, the average student will have to put in 125 to 130 hours of work into that module. Now, ECTS and learning outcomes are related because they are both part of this student-centered or learner-centered system in education. So, ECTS and learning outcomes go together. Achieving the learning outcomes, you are rewarded in ECTS credits. And in the Melanda process, we have 46 countries, all of which use the ECTS credits. Within the Melanda framework, as you know, there are three cycles. And I want to mention these three cycles because sometimes our professors get a bit confused about the language used to describe the three Melania cycles and the language we use in the learning outcomes to describe our modules and courses. I you we have three cycles, bachelors, masters and PhD. When we were drawing up these three cycles, they used generic descriptors. Now, in the English language, the words generic descriptors refer to general statements which are used to describe every subject <coughs> in every university in every country that has signed up to the Bologna process. So the descriptors are very broad, general statements. They are not learning outcomes. The generic descriptors are also called the Dublin descriptors because they happen to be drawn up at a meeting of the European Commission in Dublin, where it was looking at this meeting of the Education Minister from. Now, what are the generic descriptors? These are the generic descriptors for the batch of self. That means that in this university, every bachelor's degree should be capable of being mapped on to satisfy these generic descriptors. If one looks at it, they talk about knowledge and understanding. They talk about applying knowledge and understanding. They talk about gathering and interpreting data. The generic descriptors talk about communication. And they also talk about the learning skills that your students will get. Now, these are all general statements. Notice there's no reference to specific subjects. 
their daily try to give you subject. Likewise, at mass to the similarly, except in more detail. The, the big difference really between bachelors and masters is in the whole area of research. You know, provide the basis for developing and applying ideas within a research context. And also then building on that is again a PhD, again generic descriptors. So these generic descriptors have to be brought down to your level in writing your documents. So whatever you do, either you start with the genetic descriptors and you walk down to the learning outcomes, or you start with the learning outcomes and map the bottom genetic descriptors. Either way, the two have to be related. Now, again, in the Bologna process, we have bachelors, masters, and they indicate here the number of years associated with each. That's no problem. You know all that. You might always have to come across the European Qualifications Framework, which also uses generic descriptors. Now, the Bologna process only applies to university, totally. But the European Qualifications Framework applies from kindergarten right up to PhD. And it talks here about knowledge, skills, and competence. We explain more confidence later on. But again, it has these generic descriptors corresponding to each particular level under those three headings. Now, so here's our European qualifications framework, the Bologna framework, for second, 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 third, second. And this is the European qualifications framework, level six, seven, eight. And Slovenia is working towards a national qualifications framework, which will have to put in place in order to be compliant with the line. <coughs> and the two can in fact map out to each other. But you need to worry about that. I need mean that for those of you who are particularly interested. Now, when we started off in my country planning to meet this deadline in 2010, for full implementation of Bologna. At our meetings of the professors, people were asking, well, is Bologna a good idea? Do we really have to change? Why can we not stay where we are? And Dawn Ryan, the head of quality promotion, and myself, we went to meetings of every faculty in the university to explain about the Bologna process and the implications for introducing learning outcomes. <clears throat> Some faculties had no difficulty. Medicine said, oh, this makes very good sense. In fact, we've been using learning outcomes for many years with our medical students. The engineering faculty said this makes good sense, they had no problem. The commerce faculty, the arts faculty, some people that caused problems. You had people in philosophy, you have many philosophy people here. Yeah. And we have, yes. <laughs> and the philosophy department said to us, oh, when I did work to our students, I am not really sure what's going to come back. So I really do not want to specify things too much in philosophy. But then within the arts faculty, we had language professors. And the language professors said, you know, this looks like a very good idea. Because we are trying to teach our students to speak Spanish. German and French and Italian and so on. And these learning outcomes will help us to map the skills. Eventually, all the faculties came together and agreed that they would implement learning outcomes because they saw the great advantage of it. 
as a method of advertising on courses, of putting them on paper <coughs> the advantages of, say, doing a philosophy degree. To other subject areas, the thinking skills that you develop and that people coming out from language skills or skills in philosophy or medical skills, all of these could not be written down in terms of learning outcomes. <coughs> so by writing down the learning outcomes for our courses, we are advertising them. And we are saying, if you do this course, this is what you'll be able to do when you finish the course. These are the knowledge and skills that you have developed during the time. So if I was to summarize the actionized development process, number one, I would put that as there. Easily readable and compatible. And that is the whole basis for learning all things. The other parts of the learning process follow on. Again, all the stuff taking exercises. Describing the higher education in terms of learning outcomes a precondition. So you cannot say in your university that we are compliant with Bologna if you do not have correctly written learning outcomes describing every course. And again, emphasizing they must use learning outcomes also as a basis for national qualifications framework which you are working on in studying them. And now that you are working on the land heading towards 2020, what's going to happen at 2020? And here in the European Minister's Responsible for Higher Education at the making that moving, they definitely emphasize that the development process is leading to compatibility and comparison. So the Bologna process